again, I want to make a couple of announcements before we get in the message, and you can be turning to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, you know, remember we've got a young adult fellowship night, 19 to 39 year old, uh, Saturday, October 12th, yeah. at 6 o'clock at Sean and Dean's house, uh, I think chili dogs and stuff like that's on the menu. And big bonfire. It's a beautiful place down there. My brother has a beautiful place. And a big fire pit right down there by the pond. He just needs a little bit more water in his pond. Uh, like everybody else does around here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's a beautiful place. And uh, y'all have a good time in fellowship. And I bet you hear some preaching from Sean or Philip or probably both. But uh, y'all pray for Philip. He's up preaching at uh, Brother Turkey's today. Uh, he'll be home tonight. He said he's making a flying. He's got to preach this morning. And he's flying, make a flying trip back tonight. Uh, so y'all pray for him. And also, uh, we got the card for uh, Addie and Austin and the kids that we that we miss them and we love them. And they're in the back. If you want to sign them, done made a pretty good circle. Uh, but uh, sign those cards. They'll be on the back on the right. Next time we're going to send to them because we love them and we miss them. And uh, we, I, I pray for them every day and that the Lord and use them and bless them. Amen. But we sure do miss them. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Did I already tell you to turn there? Yeah. I have read, I'm not bragging because I, I, don't, I don't read, I don't read as many words a minute as my wife does. Uh, her reading comprehension is pretty good, and her skill set is pretty good, but I'm a little slower. Uh, but I have read basically the New Testament in the last three days, and uh, looking for God to show me some a message. Somebody prayed this morning, said, uh, uh, I pray that the preacher that you give recollection, recollection, reco Lection to the things that he studied. And uh, my goodness, you might all not pray that way. Second <laughs> Corinthians chapter 11. Reading the Bible is very important. Now, I'm saying, and I'm a guy that once I find something, I pull myself into it and I'll spend hours and hours upon two lines that are in the Bible. But Reading gives you an overall view of the Bible, and it helps you so much. And you, it's kind of like playing that match game with the kids. You know, you've got the little cards that match, and you've seen a sock over here, and you're, and you're, and you're going through there, and you've got a shoe and everything else, and then you flip up a sock. Well, you've seen it. It was about three, three chapters ago, but you remember seeing that sock? Somebody helped me. So, you say, oh yeah, that sock was right over here. Go back, pick it up. Boom, a match. Yeah. 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 Right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Went over like a lead bar. Second <laughs> <laughs> Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Would to God we dare, you would, could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. Paul was, he's writing, Paul was rude. In his speech. Amen. And his speech was what they call contemptible. Yeah. You need to get a hold of this. Yeah. Yeah. Because the world thinks that flowery speech and a good orator is what makes a good preacher. I'm so far from the truth. The Bible says your your enticing words, fair speeches, and all that stuff is a sign that you're a prophet of the devil. Would to God you would bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Amen. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he, for he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom you have not preached, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which we have not accepted, you might well bear with him. 
Heavenly Father, I pray you help us this morning. God, I, you know I need you. And Lord, I pray you forgive me and help me. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach a message entitled, A Savior for the Simple. Amen. You complex people that are way too smart, you probably don't need a Savior. Come on. But us simpletons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 This world has gone nuts for education. I, I, I'm, I'm proud of people that go to school. I'm proud of people that go to college. I'm proud of our boys for graduating Bible college. I'm proud of them going to Bible college. But it's just like the world says, hey, you're, you're going to school, we'll back you no matter who you are or what you're doing. The world has gone nuts over education. And education so far has produced a bunch of idiots when it comes to Bible study. When it comes to God's people, because they're educated. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, listen to me carefully, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. When people think that they know more than this book, and when they act like this book doesn't matter, and when they act like the true religion, you're just a hayseed and a hillbilly because you still believe in Jesus, and you still believe in the shed blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them think whatever they want to think, man. I've done been long, I've been done, I've done been around long enough to know that I'm believing in this book. That song, that song, a blessed hope, the book and the blood. He says, bear with me a little bit, my father. I want to tell you about the simplicity that is in Christ. And he said, I'm fearing that some of you are getting away from it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a danger there. And there was a danger in this Corinthian church. They were very talented. They were very gifted. Yeah. They had all kinds of spiritual gifts. Right? But they were the biggest bunch of babies you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. That goes hand in hand, by the way. Amen. <laughs> you know somebody that's got extreme talent and the Lord's blessed them with a lot of gifts you, you can't hardly deal with them because they're such a big baby yeah. <laughs> 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 and there are hundreds of different churches in the world there are many different Bibles the last time I ever studied anything about how many Bibles there's like 50 some different versions. I know it's probably 70, 80, 90, 100. There's so many different doctrines. Yeah. It would take a man a lifetime to sort through all the different teachings by the different churches and denominations. I mean, to really get down and study all their stuff. It'd take a lifetime. I'm glad today that salvation is so simple. It's so simple. It's so simple. He said, now notice, but I fear that by any means the serpent of God, as the serpent of God eat through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's simple. Salvation is simple. I'm glad. I'm glad that he he made himself poor, yeah. that I could become rich. Yeah. <laughs> well, sir, sir, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. and thou yeah. shalt be saved. Yeah. Listen to me now. No philosophy, no art, no science, no medication. No good work. Right. No golden rule. Right. No sacrament. Right. No church membership. No baptism. No tongue. Just Christ. Just Christ. Just Christ. I get scared of people that try to complicate and muddy the world yeah. with the doctrine right. that right. we have. Right. It's so simple. Yeah. It's just Jesus. Right. Amen. <laughs> just believe Christ paid for your sin. That's, right. that's not just the sins you've committed. Come on, for you. That's the ones you are committed. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
the ones you have committed yeah. than the ones you're going to. Yeah. He's the Savior of all. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He, he died for all of our sin. Yeah. The sin that of the whole world yeah. has been wiped out. Yeah. Yeah. One man yeah. sacrificed. You trust him. You trust Christ Amen. and you'll make it. Then you'll make it in. Yeah. But see, but the devil's very crafty. Right here, you've already seen the outline form before your eyes. Yeah. You've seen another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel in the text that we've already read. Yeah. And this is the way the world works. This is how the devil has designed the place in which he runs. Yep. So that you would be confused right. about something so simple. <laughs> That Jesus died for your sin, according to the scripture. First of all, let's see the right Jesus. Amen. Yeah. We got to identify the right Jesus because he says, he says, if it's, it's come, if some come preach in verse four, if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, yeah, another Jesus. Let's identify the Jesuses that are around us. And then let's identify the right Jesus, shall we? Well, there's um, many paintings painted about Jesus, a, a portrait of Jesus, and some have him with blonde hair and blue eyes. And some with brownish red hair and some with red hair. Would the real Jesus stand up? The real Jesus... You say, well, how do you know? Those are paintings. We never look at here. We never seen what he looked like. I know this one thing. I know that he didn't have red hair. I know that he didn't have brown hair. I know that he didn't have blonde hair. You say, how do you know? All them Catholic paintings of Jesus and his blonde hair and blue eyes, that's straight out of hell, friend. Because read your Bible. The Song of Solomon gives the greatest picture of Christ and it yeah. says, and his locks were lovely. They were black as a raven. Yeah. He was a Jew, friend. Yeah. You say, I don't believe that. I don't believe he brought so boundary with Song of Solomon. Oh, you can't with Solomon? One of the greatest types of Christ. Amen. Yeah. So, the right Jesus. The world has many Jesus. Yeah. The Catholics have a Jesus. Yeah. Oh, we're getting uh, yeah. we're getting somewhere else. Right. They got a Jesus that says that he can only be approached through his mother Mary. Yeah. 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 Come on. Go ahead. Boy, don't that sound good? Yeah. Don't that sound good? Don't we all have friends that are Catholic along the way and they seem normal people, don't they? Yeah. But who's lying? Oh, hey, what are you going to stand on? Just because they're good people, there's good people in every denomination. There's good people in every religion. My goodness, I know some good Muslims. That's right. But here's the deal. You can't base that upon somebody's character. you got to base it upon what the book says. Amen. And there ain't no way that Mary was a perpetual virgin. The book says that Jesus had some brothers and sisters. She just a big sinner, although she was a good woman, she was just a big sinner as anybody else and needed a savior. Otherwise, why did she go into the temple when Jesus was eight years old and offer sacrifice for purification if she wasn't pure? That's a Catholic Jesus. Amen? Yeah. That feeds you sacraments and tells you that your salvation is based upon this little wafer and the, and the fermented oats that you drink. Because this is, this is no picture of it. This is it. This turns into the body of Jesus and turns into the blood of Jesus. 
But no Catholic has ever preached to you any sermon on the second coming about Jesus coming and being king over all the earth. They avoid all that stuff. Right. Oh, it's one of those things. Yep, one of them hate messages, preacher. You got listen, I want you to be able to identify the real Jesus. Yep. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's one right out of the Bible. Amen. Amen. He had another name there, but she wasn't. His cold. What's the word? Deity. Mm. Mediator. Yeah. It'd be mediatrix. Cold mediatrix. The Bible says there's one man between God and man. The man. Amen. Christ Jesus. modern Jesus. What about him? The one that, that, that the scholars all preach about all the time right now. He's a health and wealth Jesus. Right. He's the one that if you see your seat, send your seat, that he'll give you a Cadillac and pay off all your mortgages and everything else. Huh? What about, he never preaches against sin, judgment, righteousness, or nothing like that. It's all about the Beatitudes of Sermon on the Mount. That's the modern Jesus. Listen, you better be careful. You be that generous. You'll say, oh, that brother Scotty, he's too hard. Them preachers down there preach too hard. And they, they preach against sin. They preach against stuff like that. Yeah. They're too hard. They're too yeah. negative. Yeah. 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 You've been listening to stuff like that because some flowered in somebody with another Jesus. Yeah. 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 My Jesus, if I read my Bible correctly, and I believe I do, my people, my Bible says more about hell than it does about heaven. Yeah. My Bible talks more about judgment, the second coming of Christ, and stomping the, his enemies to death like the stomping out a nest full of quail eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Than it does about us getting saved. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Oh my! It got quiet in here, didn't it? Yeah, right. Right. Good preaching. You're right. All oh, right. Good you preaching. Say stuff like that. Who's going to? The preachers are all died and gone now. You're right. Yeah, once you get preach, preach, preach about preach. stuff like this, they're all gone. Hey, hey. there's a handful left that still stand up and preach yeah. against some stuff. Yeah. Hey, hey. Amen. Hey. 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 You got. You got the. You got the Catholic Jesus, you got the modern Jesus, you've got the Mormon Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Was the spirit brother of Lucifer and Mary three or four times while he's here on the earth? That's not the same Jesus. Oh. Listen, don't get me wrong, there's same people in the Mormon church, there's same people in the Catholic church, there's same people in the Church of Christ, and there's lost people in the Baptist church. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, you better be careful that you get the right Jesus. Amen. Which one's the right one? The one we have authority to go for God on? Amen. Acts 4 12. Says neither is there none other. For there's none other name given among men. Yes. Whereby Amen. we must be saved. Yes. Other than the name of Jesus. Amen. None other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. For God so loved the world yeah. that He gave His only begotten yeah. Son. That whosoever, hey, He gave His only begotten yeah. Son. Listen to me. Because you and I would have went to hell straight like a bullet. Yeah. 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 Have it not been for His Son. Yeah. 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 John 14, 6. He, took, he said that we don't know the way. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man coming to the Father but by me. How many of y'all have been influenced by somebody that wants you to all come together? We all believe the same God. We all believe the same Jesus. We all got, and it's all one big pool. You know, have, have you opened your eyes to see what's happening? Yeah. Do you not know that the Antichrist is coming and we're going to have a one world government? We're going to have a one world religion. It's exactly headed that way right now. And it depends upon God's people taking a stand and saying, I'll not have another Jesus. I'll take the biblical Jesus. That's good preaching. One that saved me, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. 
John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Verse 14, since the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. Some the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just talking about our Jesus, the right one. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you don't know how he's right? Let me give you a good rule of thumb. He's the center. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Nothing tagged on it. Our little, our little Jaguard went to a church here a while back, and uh, she went to church a while back, and they told her that she had to be baptized to be saved. She went to a Baptist church, y'all. Uh -oh. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you want to know what Jesus, what Jesus, the, which one's the right one? The one that don't add a bunch of stuff. Don't add church membership. That don't add baptism. That don't add good works. That don't add prayer rolling beads around. That don't add sacrament. It's just Jesus and Jesus alone. I'm telling you, he stood the test of time. He's been there in eternity past. He'll be there when the next generation passes away. He's all together lovely friends. He's a He don't need water. He don't need works. He don't need nothing. He can stand on his own. It's Jesus plus nothing minus nothing. How many of you believe in that Jesus? About half of you lost you towards your back. How many of you believe in that Jesus? Yes, amen. We can win that get an altar call right now. Because, listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't believe in that Jesus, you're, you're missing out. There's no hope for you. You need to accept Him and believe in Him today. That Jesus. That Jesus. The one that saved my brother. The one that saved me. The one that saved my folks. That Jesus. All right. He said... He said, if anybody, if anybody preaches, preaches another Jesus whom you have not preached, or if you received another yeah. spirit, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. another spirit, I, was, I, I got in the wrong spirit just a while ago. A while ago. I'm talking about in, in between, I've just seen Samson and I got in the wrong spirit. I mean, it wasn't Samson's fault. He was just sharing a story with me. <laughs> he, he, was, he was sharing about being at the wedding there and, 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 and the people that he run around with and done greatest things with or selling them down. And all of a sudden, the song popped in my head. All my rowdy friends oh. have settled down. Cornbread and iced teas took the place of pills and 90 proof. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm glad that that's happened, but that's not got anything to do with the Spirit of God. That's got a spirit on it. But it ain't the Holy Spirit. Just like Leonard Skinner got a spirit on it. I've heard them all. I've, I've listened to them in concerts. There's, there, there's a spirit there. Yes, there is. There's a spirit there. I'm going to tell you something. I've been to AYC down there with Arkansas Youth Conference down there with the Missionary Baptist. There's a spirit down there too. What's funny, I can hook up with the spirit of Leonard Skinner, but I can't hook up with ones in AYC. Come on. Can I survive? Yeah. You're right, preacher. Go ahead. If you're watching this by Facebook, let me tell you just what I said. <laughs> let me maybe make that clear. I can't hook up with a bunch of bunch bumping and grinding teenagers uh, saying they're worshiping God. I'm I, I doing their praise and all on everything else. I am telling you, I hook up with the old time. Overtaken with our contemporary music, our contemporary worship, our contemporary everything else, and then God's people running out when it gets a little crazy in here. We want the spirit of God. We want God to come in this place and let God manifest Himself, and people start getting excited and they start shouting. God's people say, "Oh, I don't know about all that. I'm looking for back door. I ain't seen that before." That's right, you 
ain't never been to service like that. Oh, but once you've been taken by this contemporary world, it didn't just start overnight. It's been in the work since 1900. You say, how do you know? I know because the church ain't changed. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the spirit of lay on the field right now. You're neither hot nor cold. Just lukewarm. Yep. We made it, brother. Go ahead. Amen. Can I just say, not all the time our kids, our young people, is going to be so excited for the Lord. Not all, not all the time they're going to be running laps and shouting and everything else. Sometimes they're going to be in the ditch and doing everything. Sometimes you're going to be in the ditch. Yep. That's right. Amen. I'm amazed at how God, how the devil can use people. I'm absolutely amazed at how the devil can use you. And I'm going to use Marty Weathers. He's not here this morning, but he wouldn't care. He's the kind of guy that he wouldn't care. And I'll tell him, we're going to have to send him a text that I used him. Marty got mad at me here a while back. And you would never think that Marty Weathers would ever be the kind of person that would up and not come to church. But he did. Over something that he thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I went to him. We strained it out, men to men. We loved each on each other. We cried, everything else. And he come right back to church, right in his role. I would have never thought that he would ever miss a day at church because of anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. But the devil's good. Yeah. <laughs> He's got another spirit that can get in there. And it ain't the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you are what you are. How many of you need to just settle down and say, I'm accepting whatever comes along? I mean, if it's biblical, I'm going to take it. If it's old time and biblical, I'm for it all the way. Hallelujah. I've done too far down the road now. I've done, I done messed this sermon up and everything else. But I pray God help me. Amen. I pray it was a little dull when I was reading it. And, and writing that out by the God to helping me. Hey, I'm telling you there's a different spirit with all this mess. I, I, I walked up one day. And this is no lie. Shannon took our kids to a, uh, uh, up to the church camp. And she took them to a teen retreat that they had up there. A teen, yep. teen camp. And she took them up there, and I walked in the back, and they was all standing up. First of all, I don't like anybody making me stand when I'm singing. Yeah. I don't want to stand up for three verses, three songs of every time. I don't want to stand. I want something to make me stand up. Yeah. I want a spirit that gets up in me and makes me want to get up. And stand. I ain't got nothing wrong. If some, your song leader says y'all stand and we stand, for the rest of the evening and, 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 and saying it, it's okay. You, know, I, you understand what I'm saying, but I don't like it. But that, that contemporary crowd that's over there, and, and I walked up, and I'd come up late, had to work that day, and I'd come up and, and watch them, and I could hear them for a long, and they wasn't playing our time. Yeah. And I had them a praise band, a bunch of bunch of teenagers up there that looked like they'd been on drugs and everything else, and they were rocking it out up there. And I'm thinking the whole time walking up there looking at that, that my spirit is not identifying with that. That Holy Ghost is not identifying with that. And, and, and my wife said, what, what do you think? And then the next day, I think it was the next day or something, I may mean, get two stories mixed up there, but uh, when they broke out the Bible deal, <coughs> and they didn't have a King James Bible, she just loaded them up and took them all. Amen. 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 Good for you, sister. Amen. Oh, does that make a difference? Yeah. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Listen, some of you right now are trying to compromise. Come on. Come on. You're trying you're trying to give in this because you, you wish that your preacher would just settle down <laughs> and be more loving and preach more flowery messages, glory messages <laughs> that were never centered around anything that was controversial. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord help. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I'm telling you, I'm trying to be nice. You're going to listen to me. I mean, I, I, I look forward to being 
Because I can be funny when I want to be funny. I'm telling you, I can. I'll try to be funny, and it, I, I can succeed most of the time. And I'll say, I want to be funny, nice, loving, everything else. And then the Spirit of the Lord gets a hold of me. Yeah. And next thing I know, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm done three sheets in the wind, and the preacher like fork and lightning. Yeah, amen. Amen. Lord, I did not mean to say that. I wasn't going to say that. He said, but I was. And remember, when you pray, you said, Lord, let me, you, you need to give me my mouthpiece. And you got my mouth. You say whatever you want to say to me. I said, yeah, I said that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He said, well, did you mean it? Yeah, I meant it, Lord. Well, put your griping in this let me lose it. Amen. Put your griping. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Come on. Right. This is our identifier. One way to know you got the right Jesus is to know you got the right Spirit. Right. Second Corinthians 3 and 17 says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. When you got saved, the Bible says, For by one Spirit were we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. <laughs> Try the Spirit. I'll never forget, I went to this, and I'm going to pick on everybody, and I'll pick on Baptists because they're the stories out there, non-soul-winning, lazy, yeah. Calvinistic garments that there yeah. is. But I, we was coming back from ball game, stopped with Bon Homme, and, and uh, I was at the McDonald's there, and uh, I went to the New these people group over there, and I went up there and talked to them. I will just come up to them and talk to them about the Lord. I said, has the Lord been good to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they started the end and said, well, bless God. We're fire bad time, Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking people. What about you? I said, I'm saved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my spirit was, was reaching out to see if people were born again. They wanted to know whether I talked in tongues. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the evidence for some that they got salvation. Yeah. That's what they say. But my Bible said, no, 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 no. I got, I got salvation when I received the Spirit of God. I just read the verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. doesn't matter who you are. Verse 13, that when you got saved, you were baptized into one body by one Spirit. Amen. 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 Look at this. Now, this is going to blow your mind, all right? I've got to get to the good part here. Another gospel. Another gospel. Paul said in Galatians 6, 1, uh, 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 Galatians uh, 1 and verse 6 through 8, he, he talks about the warning of that. If anybody comes, if an angel comes, preach another gospel, let him be accursed. Right? Yeah. What is the gospel? First Corinthians 15, 1, brethren, I declare to you the gospel. How did Jesus Christ die and rose again? And, and was buried, rose again the third day. He rose again, and that's the gospel. Yeah. 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 It's the good news that Jesus has died for you. And I don't got a bunch of stuff attached to it. Like the Jew wants to attach circumcision to it. He wants to attach Moses' law and all the commandments. They want to attach the, the Greeks and the Gentiles want to attach philosophy to it. Water, they want to yeah. uh, uh, attach sacraments and uh -huh. works and church membership and everything else. It's awesome. It's good news that Jesus died. Amen. Amen. Look at this. In your second Corinthians 11, I'm having to speak through here. Look in verse 13. He has to identify who he is for a while. He starts off, he said, let me bear a little bit my father. Even though y'all think my speech is rude and contemptible, Paul says, I bear with me a little bit. He says, I've got reason for being this away. And uh, then he gets down after he identifies who he is. Verse 13, he says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Yeah. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transforming an angel of life. <clears throat> Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness who end shall be according to the works. Now listen to this, y'all. False apostles. The Lord already started calling them out in Revelation chapter 2. 
He said the church in Ephesus said, y'all say y'all a bunch of apostles, but you're lying. Right. What did the Catholic Church say that they're, they're, they're claiming on the apostles? They're claiming apostolic succession all the way back to the apostles. They say Peter was the first pope. Right. And their pope ain't supposed to be married. Right. But Peter had a mother-in-law in the Bible. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Peter was from Babylon. He never went to Rome. Right. It's crazy how people yeah. mess things up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, they claim apostolic succession from Peter all the way back there. That's nuts, ain't it? It is. Yeah. And then, from Matthew 16, upon this rock I build my church, talking about Peter there, and uh, that's where the Catholic Church get their stuff from, and they've got authority. Do you know that a Pope can sit and say, I don't care what your Bible says, yep. I say this and that, and yep. it is supposed to be the truth. Yep. Yep. Anybody with that much authority needs to be. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Check this out, right here. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yeah. Satan was never an angel. Satan was a cherub. Right. Yeah. Anointed cherub that covered. But he's able to transform himself into an angel of light. What about Jesus? He's an angel of the Lord. Yeah. Remember he appeared as an angel of the Lord, not only in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament as well. After he resurrected, he appeared to Paul. Acts 27, angel of the Lord. And uh, Satan also appears as an angel. Jesus is God. We all know that. Yeah. Satan is called God in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Yeah. Jesus is a lion from the tribe of Judah. Satan's like 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, yeah. walking to and from yeah. the earth. Both quote scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Both are anointed. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is anointed by God the Father, and Satan is the anointed cherub that covers. Right. Both are princes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. John 14 says the prince of this world must be picked out, talking about Satan. Jesus in Isaiah 9 and 6 is the prince of peace. Yeah. Yeah. Both have brides. Which are cities. <laughs> you say, what is that? Jesus has New Jerusalem. Yeah. He said, John, you want to see the bride? He said, I sure do. And he said, I saw New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. Out of God, out of heaven. Yeah. Adorned as a bride to her husband. Yeah. Amen. New Jerusalem. Well, guess what? Saints you got a bride too. Yeah. Revelation chapter 17. Babylon. Mystery Babylon. The city set on seven hills. Rome. Amen. Rome. In case you've been deluded by everybody else around you, our forefathers fought and bled and died because they went against the teachings of Rome. Yeah. 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 Amen. Both have brides. And both are servants. Mm -hmm. yeah. Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, the serpent. The serpent, the CV. John chapter 3, verse 14. Moses, if Jesus said as Moses was lifted up. To lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Amen. He was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Are you getting these yeah. friends? Are you getting them? Listen, we have an enemy. Uh, He's a counterfeit. Uh, the boy it's easy. Yeah. What was Greatest sports teams or some of the more sports heroes say God in a sentence. And we're all yeah, over. If a yeah. stupid country and western senior gets up there and says something about God, you melt over and say that's the greatest people on the face of earth. But someone tell you something, they're hypocrisy, they're a hypocrite, yeah. they're a liar. Yeah. Anybody can sell out their soul the same for that garbage. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Right. Hell's 
father for those Come people. On. I'm telling you, people that have left out I, I, I here, they left the choir, <laughs> singing the choirs and, yep. and gospel music and went on to country music, went on to rap, went on to whatever, yeah. being famous and everything else. They traded all that they had. Yeah, they did. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Another Jesus. Yep. Another spirit. Yep. And another gospel. Yep. He's got ministers that are able to transform themselves and the ministers of life. You wonder why the world's deceived today. Just think about it, friend, when the church leaves. And the Bible says, and he shall send strong delusion that they shall believe a lie. Friend, if, if you've got, you got loved ones that are lost and they stay here during tribulation, it's a good chance that they'll die and go to hell and they'll never be saved right. if they don't get it right now. Listen, we, not, we need to be clear and make our stand. We serve the right Jesus. Right. We live in the right spirit and we preach the right gospel. Amen. According to the Bible, friend. Amen. To the Bible. Amen. To the Bible. Amen. Amen. If the Bible's wrong, we're all bumped. Yeah. We're all done. That's right. You're right. If the book's counterfeit, we're all washed up. But I'm telling you, I'm standing with everything that I got on it being the authoritative word of God that the only book God ever wrote and gave to man. And it's got power in it. I've seen it page after page and time after time. I trusted it with all my heart. The Bible says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. I did that when I collect years up. I'm still trusting in that. All over the world said, you're a bunch of hillbillies, you're a bunch of hay seeds, you still believe in that Jesus nonsense, you still believe in that Genesis account of creation nonsense, you still believe, you actually believe Moses parted the Red Sea, I believe he parted a wide open amen, and they walked the cross on dry land, amen. I believe, amen. I believe, amen. Do you believe it? Yes. You believe it? He said, it's a savior for the simple. Amen. We don't want to be identified with the simple, do we? <coughs> Nobody wants to be called a simple too. The Bible says the preaching the cross to them that perish foolish. But unto us which are saved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the power of God. Yeah. Well, bless your heart. You've been good listeners this morning. I hope you got something from here. Yeah, it's good. It's good. If there's a person here that's got, you say, well, I don't know whether I've saved or not. I go back with people, Miss Val, Miss Patty, Shannon, all these preachers, all you young men, Brother Johnny, y'all all have experienced it. How many times have we dealt with people that come to them and said, I don't know if I'm saved or not? What do you got? What do you got to go on? Huh? What do you got? You got a book, and that's all you got. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to the book. What I'd like to hear, what I'd like to hear from those charismatics today, what I'd like to hear from all them that talk about their tongues and talk about all their gifts and stuff, I'd like to hear just one of them give their testimony of salvation. Yeah. Yeah. One of them tell me about when they got born again and what happened. Yeah. Yeah. When you want to talk about how you can speak in tongues, let me tell you about what Jesus did for me. Yeah. You want to talk about how spiritual you are and about how many, how many, how many, how many uh, 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 Holy Ghost filled services you can be in? Let me tell you about this. Jesus came to me when I was 11 years old, and I was lost, don't go to hell, and I knew that I'd die, and I told my granny, I said, I'm going to die and go to hell, and she yeah. said, you just wait for the preacher the next night, you just come back for revival, and I'm going to tell you, I was scared that night, and I didn't want to go to sleep, but I'm going to tell you something, one day that the invitation was given, I come down there, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, and He saved me, and there was a spirit that come in me, and I thank God today that He's Did that intelligent tongue help anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Did you know that's exactly what Paul did 
Over three times Paul went and stood before kings and before men. And you know what he did? He gave his testimony about when he got born again. That's the spirit of prophecy. Amen. We get when we get born again. Amen. Let's all stand. Listen, you may be here this morning. I'm not bad enough than anybody. I, I've criticized everybody that don't line up for this book. Yeah. I've criticized myself for not lining up for this book. But if you're here today and you don't know the Jesus that we're preaching about, it's time to get saved. Yeah. Yes, he loves you. But yes, you are a sinner. Right. And without him, you will die and go to hell. You say, well, I thought you said that he paid for the sins of the whole world. He sure did. But it's only effective when you put your faith in it. He's paid the price. All you've got to do is pick it up off the table. He has wiped the slate clean. All you've got to do is clean. Whatever's on your heart when you come. Maybe you've been tempted. By the things of this world. Maybe maybe you've been listening to people at work and they've been trying to say, Man, I don't know about you. You want to go. Yeah, you want to go. What about? Number 122. 122.
Do you know that you know that you're born again? If you died right now, you know that heaven would be your home. Amen. Friend, we're not going to keep everybody. Not everybody likes it. Three, four, or five times as big as us. They don't have church on Sunday night or Wednesday night. Just have church on Sunday morning. I know to some of you that'd be just fine. But I'm telling you, friend, we need it. We need all we got. We got all we get. We need it. Scotty, you know what I asked my dad the other day? died right now, where would you go? He said, I hope heaven. You know, he's went to a Church of God church 40 years. Even if he is saved, I'd hate to live in that spot where I hoped I went to heaven. Amen. Not knowing. I mean, when the Bible tells us, we can know we're saved. When, when we put our trust in Christ, we do not. Peter Ruckman made it simple. You want me to tell you how to get to heaven? Put your trust in Christ. Yes. You want me to tell you how to go to hell? Put your trust in anything else. That's right. And that's, it's really that simple. It's that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. The simplicity that is in Christ. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, praise the Lord. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate you being here this morning. <coughs> I really wanted to bring you, I looked for all the New Testament to bring you a sunshiny message this morning and really uplift you and <coughs> shout around and have a good time. But Jesus said, you lift me up, I'll draw on the That's right. I'll get you. <laughs> so that's the way it goes. Love you. I appreciate you very much. Wow. And uh, come back tonight. I think we're having a guest preacher tonight. Uh, the other night I was at the tent meeting and Brother Robert said, man, I've been wanting to come up <laughs> and visit y'all, have church with y'all. And I said, well, come up any time. And he said, well, we on fifth Sundays, he said, uh, or some other time, first, first Sunday of the month, I don't know, anyway. He said, we we have church and then turn around and eat and have church uh, and afternoon. And he said, and then I'm off at evening. And I said, well, come up. And so he, he texted me yesterday. He said, what time does church start? And I said, 530. He said, come on. So it's good to have brothers like that. Yeah. That's that's Robert Randolph's brother, Roger, and he pastors a church in Strawberry, yeah. Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church in Strawberry. He's a good fellow. And he's a good guy, a little short guy, yeah. and uh, he's a blessing. He is a good preacher. And uh, so y'all come back tonight. If he comes, I'm asking for it. He may, he may not. But, uh, we want to welcome him here. Um, yes, we changed the date on the, the potluck. Yes, we changed the date on the potluck. Thank you for watching. 20th.